fire right there. Well, something's going on here. Let me zoom in a little bit. It looks like that guy jackknife. Let's not get too distracted. Let's get to this video. What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. All you new subscribers, I'm Barboss. Check this out. There seems to be some kind of an accident up here or something. It looks like a truck jackknifed and he ended up in the ditch right here. I would walk over there but I have a subscriber that is on the way. I have never met him and he's actually on his way to come pick up the spare engine. The engine that was in the in this Civic when I first bought it a few weeks ago and this is a perfectly good running engine and he hit me up that he's interested in, in buying it so with that being said he's on his way and we're about to make a deal on it I'm not sure what he's building or what he's trying to drop this uh, engine into but I do have uh, two extra ECUs I got a VTEC head that if he needs it i'll gladly throw it in for free um i do need some money so this is great that i'm getting this so oh man i just noticed that the dude's tire the front driver's side tire is underneath the truck and i guess when the tow truck tried pulling on him the whole thing was like dipping over Man, that really sucks. So this is a subscriber I told you guys about. Let's pick up the engine. <laughs> yeah, so this is pretty much it right here. Alright, so we got the engine loaded. It's loaded into his van. This is the last time we're going to see this. It's gone. I gave him the VTEC head that I had laying around. And yeah, this is really gonna help out. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, so he hooked me up. I hooked him up and this is gonna be it. Thank you. No problem. He came in clutch, but now we got some spending money. <laughs> So now that that transaction is complete, let's get back to the Civic. Now that we have a little bit of spending money, we're gonna go ahead and figure out what we're gonna do about this exhaust system. If we're gonna try to snake it through here or figure out how we're gonna do that. We're also gonna go ahead and check out what was rubbing on this side because obviously something was rubbing. Um, I know that the fender was rubbing, so we're gonna have to adjust the suspension in all four corners and figure out i'm pretty sure that not pretty sure but i i'm thinking that it might be the dust shield that was rubbing back there not sure not positive but we will take that tire out and find out completely 
So the first thing we're gonna do is figure out exactly what we're gonna do with that exhaust system. Now that we have a little bit of spending money, we might be able to get some welds done because you guys already know that I don't do any welding in my channel because I don't have a welder. Otherwise, I would have busted out a bunch of welds. Um, so you guys seen how, how black the head got, this whole section. Even the hose, there's a little bit of blackness right here and that's not good. That'll definitely heat up the head, that'll definitely heat up my, my uh, coolant hose, which will heat up the coolant a little bit more. Not only that, I could even burn this right through this coolant hose because these gases that are coming out are very, very hot, very high temperature. So we're going to try to figure out how we're going to route this. Um, I do have a coupling and I do have a downpipe, so let's figure that out right now. So the first thing I did was find some bolts that are going to go in here and these will fit in here perfectly. So I'm going to use these. These are from an old power steering pump. I went ahead and I took them off off of that so I'm gonna go ahead pull those bolts back out and we are gonna put them through here and thread them in all right I'm not gonna thread in the bolts all the way in because I got I do have to take this back off but you guys get the idea once these guys are threaded in that's gonna be nice and flush right here and it's gonna look something like that All right, and then this pipe, which is right here, I originally wanted this pipe to go down like this, like such. And I wanted it to connect to my exhaust system somehow. But, as you guys can see, it's gonna hit the fan. It's really close to the top hose. I would say, about an eighth of an inch from touching the top hose and also it is very close to my clutch slave down there even if i turn it this way i would hit more of the fan on this side so i'm debating if i cut a chunk off of here let's say i cut this pipe in half right here and then this guy would sneak in a little bit closer this way if that would create more of a clearance but it looks like on the exact on the exhaust manifold it would be a really tight fit also so i don't know i don't want to screw this up and have to pay twice when i go to get this welded so my second option would be to send this guy straight up like this instead something like that um, the problem with doing that is that this would definitely kill this whole sleeper build that I'm trying to do putting this exhaust out the hood I really don't want to do that I really did not plan on doing that but I'm gonna have to for the time being until I could get something completely custom made. And then once I get something completely custom made, I could go ahead and run my exhaust system that I have, all the piping. But for now, I believe the best method would be to run this, this pipe straight up. Maybe I could angle it a little bit. So right there is nice and straight. If I angle it, it would be somewhat like that. So I think this might be my best bet. I'm gonna go ahead, take a marker, mark a spot on the top, mark a spot at the bottom, and take it to a welder and get it welded. So 
So I got this pretty much marked. And let me show you guys how I'm planning on doing this. So you guys can see that there's some markings right there. Well, there's some markings over here too. So what I'm gonna do is, this one's, this side is B, this side is A. So A and A will be matching with the little line that is right there will be matching. Just like that. And then for the top, the same thing, it will be matching. And I'm gonna take it to the guy and hopefully he could clamp this together and then he could go ahead and grind it or do whatever he's got to do. And that will keep both of these pieces together. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and pull this tire off and see what was rubbing in there. I just went ahead and tore everything down and it looks like the dust shield is the problem or was the problem. I went ahead and I bended it back a little bit more. Everything else is spinning pretty freely. No noise is coming out of there as it spins. So I'm guessing, like I said, this dust shield was the problem. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble everything and see if it continues making that noise. All right, now that I got the side reassembled, I'm gonna go ahead and raise the suspension just a little bit. Same thing on the passenger side. All right, for the rear, we're gonna go ahead and also lift it up, because it is pretty low. I'm down to the last coilover. This one does have to be adjusted a lot. It is pretty low. It needs to come up maybe to where that second coil is located. So up to around here. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust this. All right. I like how the back is sitting. The front is still sitting a little bit low, but it's not bad compared to how it was. I believe it will clear. The tires will clear on turns, but I'm not sure yet. I would have to take it out for another test drive. All right, so I turned it on and I think I'm gonna go maybe around the block one more time and find out if this thing's making any noise. Hopefully it's not rubbing anymore.
So the noise completely left. So the dust shield was definitely making noise. It was rubbing as the wheels were spinning. It was rubbing probably on the rotor. When I took it on the last test drive, during this test drive, um, did not make any noise. The turbo sounds very healthy. The engine sounds pretty healthy too. I did not go past 3500 on this test drive. And I do not have any leaks or anything at all with this engine. So everything's looking pretty good. The next thing we got to do is we're going to take a drive right now so we can get this pipe welded. Because look how black that is getting. That's getting even worse. I really don't like that. I'm going to have to scrub that before I assemble this guy on there after it gets welded. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead, um, get ready, and then we'll go ahead and head out. I did forget to mention that it is very important to get this pipe welded and put on there because of this bong that's sitting right here. We'll be able to install our wideband and find out what's going on inside the engine. And I am pretty sure that it is going to need fuel because these turbo engines love to eat up fuel. So once we get that dialed in, we'll decide where we're going to install the FMU. We are headed right now to the place and hopefully we can get this pipe welded so we can go ahead and install it later on today. Caveman welding. All right guys, we're about to get the pipes welded. Okay. That's A. A is right there. And that's B right there. Yep. And that's right on it. You take a look at it and let me know what you think. Oh yeah, that looks good right there. Mm hmm? Yeah, that, that looks good. Right there? Yep. Well, once I do it, it's done. Yeah, that looks good right there. That's perfect right there. Okay. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Got it? Yep. You said it looked good, you had that on there, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks good, it looks good. <laughs> yeah, so anybody that needs any welding, what's the address here? Yeah, I'm getting a couple cards. Anybody that needs any welding, you're out in Aurora? Yeah, I do, I do on-site welding too. He also does on-site welding, so you guys could, could give him a call. His address here is 567 South River Street. Um, his phone number is 630-631-3145. Any kind of welding, hit Robert up. He's done this a, a bunch of times for cars, for a lot of drift people that want to drift their vehicles he's well the differentials and all kinds of things so that's pretty much it right there i'm remodeling this place so don't no think to that i'm remodeling <laughs> we, 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 we starting to remodel i do custom smokers and grills too oh he's got some smokers right here some grills and custom built anything custom that needs to be welded you come see robert man cave welding man cave welding yes, all right guys i just noticed that there's a big fire somewhere there's a lot of black smoke somewhere on that side i'm gonna try to make my way that way um i can hear the firefighters kind of far away like they're barely making their way this way or something but from far away from like half a mile away 
I could really see the smoke and it was really black and really a lot of smoke so it's probably a house that's on fire and these firefighters are barely making their way that way that kind of sucks There's a fire right there. All right, we're back at the house. That was a pretty intense fire that we've seen. I'm not sure if it was a house or a garage, but I continued driving after that. And check it out. This is the part that we got welded. And this is gonna be perfect for right there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and call this a video. We do have a lot of content to upload. I got to get this video uploaded in the next like two or three hours for you guys to watch. So I'll catch you guys on my next video, which will be the wideband install with the downpipe that we have right here. Till then. Peace out, stay safe, subscribe if you haven't, smash the like button, and I will catch you guys on my next one.